Then when the winds died and the ocean calmed, the sun would heat the shadows. With sunlight and nutrients, photosynthetic microbes would explode in numbers, releasing yet more oxygen. The algal bloom would be so great that the seas would turn green. More and yet more oxygen would be pumped into the environment. The strength of life, which had survived two snowball Earth periods, had changed the planet and was about to embark on a new chapter, but this time with abundant oxygen. Oxygen was the molecule that would change the world. If Earth had never experienced these glaciations, life could have been quite different. Life on Earth might still be limited to the bacterial grade. We could still be just a planet of slimy oceans and stromatolites with nothing uh, big enough to move and do things. And oxygen allowed one more innovation without which larger animals could not exist. That was collagen the scaffold which cells use to bind together. In this experiment in Japan, synthetic collagen is mixed with cells in a culture. These cells with collagen on the left of the screen multiply vigorously while those on the right are static. Cells begin to cluster together, as they must, in every large living creature. Vitamin C was added to create an environment in which it would be easier for cells to secrete collagen. A thin, tissue-like skin has formed in the dish. Collagen is a unique material which is produced by all animals, including humans. It helps cells to shape tissue. When a cell multiplies, it assembles collagen that it has secreted into a fine net-like structure. As the cells divide and multiply over and over, the collagen allows them to create different shapes and tissues. Dr. Kenneth Tao of the Smithsonian Institute believes that it is collagen which gave shape to life after the second snowball Earth. And since collagen is made from many atoms of oxygen, it could never have been produced if atmospheric oxygen had not been present. After the first snowball event, it's thought that collagen might have been available when oxygen became part of the atmosphere. But then, most of it was used for respiration. After the second event, oxygen rose dramatically. Because collagen is formed with two amino acids that do not appear in the genetic code, it seems to me that, that there was no way that evolution could find to make something similar to collagen without these amino acids, and therefore it probably took a long time for this to happen, and it's, that is part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that molecular oxygen is needed to make these amino acids that are important to make the collagen fibers that are important to uh, allow bodies to increase in size, for muscles to develop and be held together, for skin, for cuticles, and all of these things. So many things could have happened differently. The trillions of cells which make a human body are bound together by collagen. And without collagen, and without oxygen, 
we would not be here today. After the first snowball event, there was little change in life. After the second, oxygen levels soared and the first complex life appeared, expanding horizons and leading to higher and yet more complex life. strange creatures which evolved from the snowball events would not last long, just a few tens of millions of years before a new life force took over. Now life could never step backwards and it was in shallow seas around a vanished continent where the next step would be taken. The fossil evidence shows a rich environment of corals and fish and other marine creatures. Corals need warmth and sunlight and there would have been an abundance of both. At this time in the Earth's history, we think that our closest ancestor was this fish, called Arandaspis. It's the oldest known fish with a backbone. Without fins, it would not have been a good swimmer. They would have been filter feeders, sucking up microbes from the coral on the sea floor. As yet, no animal had developed a jaw, so probably the deep waters were not a suitable niche for them to live in. But that would change. There was a rich variety of life. Amongst it, were numerous trilobites, small, segmented, and hard-shelled creatures. Some were free swimmers, while others crawled along the sea floor. When the change came, these creatures left clues, which were picked up by an English paleontologist. This quarry in Shropshire in the west of England was once near the equator and a part of the Iaptus Sea, an ancient sea which vanished some 400 million years ago. Marine fossils, and trilobites in particular, are Dr. Richard Forty's driving passion. Oh, lovely. Look at this one. It's a chain coral. The abundance of fossils in the coral record suddenly vanished, a sure sign that something drastic happened to this environment. There were other noticeable changes to life as well. Trilobites began to alter their appearance. Some began to grow protective armor. It 
it's almost certain that they were a response, defensive response, to being under greater pressure from a variety of predators. Um, life, in other words, got a little bit tougher for the trilobites. And uh, one of their responses was to increase their protective armor. Life undertook a new development in body shape. Suddenly in the fossil record, we find fish like this, sleek, fast predators. The world began to be divided into predator and prey. It was the start of the arms race on the Miracle Planet.